Hood Rich Pablo, what's the damn deal? What's going on, how you doing? Man, we are here in the A, man. I appreciate this. A lot of people, you know, they wanted this interview, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right. Straight up. So, are you from Atlanta? This where you born and raised at? No, I was actually born in North. You know what I mean? Okay. That's why a lot of people up North can relate to me. But I, I moved here when I was like, I believe three or four, not exact, but I moved straight to Kellen Road. The apartment's called Eagles and it was called back then. Yeah. And that's who raised me, and that's why I learned that thing. Yeah. I can't really too, too much remember where I actually was born at, but yeah. shout out to Up North, though. So you like from Up North uh, Georgia or like on the East Coast? I was born in New Jersey. Okay. So uh, Box, I used to live on Baldwin Avenue in New Jer North New Jersey, actually. Okay. Yeah, I was born there, but to be real, like, my dad was an OG, like, he was on the run. I ain't gonna lie, he was on the run, so we had to pay up everything. Right. Moved straight to County Road, and, yeah. you know, went from there. Okay, so you moved on some, on some family street shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, family. okay. So, um, so you moved to Atlanta at what age? Probably like three or four. Okay. I'm not sure which one, but I'd say like four, maybe three. Okay, okay. So you moved to Atlanta at three. Yeah, I been um, to school. I ain't, I ain't never go to school up there. I always went to school in Atlanta. Yeah. So you so okay so growing up in Atlanta, um, you got a lot of your ways from the South Side, right? I mean the Southern, you know the influence of the, uh, the you know. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. South is me. So when you growing up, like, did you grow up in like a, a healthy home, mom and dad, or did you grow up in a struggling household? Uh, I wouldn't. It was we all we always was struggled. You know, it definitely like came from a poor community. If I take you to my apartments right now, they they boarded up. You know, it's still the people I lived out there when I was five years old, still living in there. Yeah. With no rent office. The rent office busted window, boards on the window, for real. Yeah. So, but you know, I actually, you know, it just, it, I, I also was raised on a lot of morals. Like my mom and my dad was Muslim. Like even though my dad had his troubles, he ended up being a minister. He actually built a, 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 his own mosque on uh around the street from County Road on Glenwood. Yeah. You know, so uh they I, and you know my mom was always with my dad. They had about six kids. We stayed in a three bedroom apartment and they also we also let other people in, cousins, mm -hmm. stepbrother, half brother, another cousin. So, you know, we were thinking it was struggling on the money part as far as morals and you know, they always, I always still felt love. I don't want to really worry about no money. Right, right, right. So at the at the young age, you wasn't out in the streets. You was more like was you was you as as a young yeah yeah yeah. Daddy died at like twelve. Okay. Daddy died at like like twelve thirteen. So you know, but like I say, on health you know, issues was it street yeah, shit? Yeah, health okay. issues. Okay. Nah, nah. He had them guy in life right in the streets. He had them became a minister, like I said. Yeah. And a uh, Muslim, like my mom used to. They go to church every Sunday. She full. All white, you know, they real, he was a real FOI minister. Right. Yeah. So, so you look to be about what, 6'4, six, 6'5? Six, Me, probably, yeah, probably like 6'3. Okay, was you hooping? Was you hooping? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I actually used to do before I was, uh, started really running around the street. They used to laugh at me. Yeah. I used to go to the basketball court, same basketball court. If you look at Easy, I shot Easy on same basketball court. I used to hoop up there every day with a basketball, walk yeah. up there, dribbling, you know what I mean? But, right. just, Time chain. They used to look at me and laugh. Look at him. You know. Right. Everybody was look. You know. I don't know. Like I did like basketball. I still can hoop, man. Put your money up with any <laughs> any rapper. You know, I'm playing. I'm better. Straight up. So teenage years, uh, junior high, high school. Uh -huh. Was you rapping then, or was you still in the streets? Yeah, nah. And, and I wouldn't even say the streets. Like you got for coming from where I came from. Be real. I never celebrated a holiday. Like mm -hmm. it was time when, when I turned. 10 and 11, my mama actually never had money for me, so she when she was at work, she printed up like a plaque, plaque say happy birthday, you know, this certificate is worth 50 or $100 or something like that, and yeah. you know, you can cash it another day, but I ain't got it right now. So you know, it wasn't never about the money, like I, I wasn't, money don't make you real, that's what, that's what my whole, like, that's what we live off of, like, it wasn't about the money, I still felt love, you know what I mean? Right. But far as money, I'm not gonna lie, we grew up hard, like, yeah. dirty clothes. I, I bought my fur mattress. I had to buy my clean draw, you know what I mean? Never yeah. went to school, fur day with new shoes. That wasn't me. Mm. 
And I ain't celebrate Christmas, so I didn't get gifts. My family wasn't, a, you know what I'm saying? So going to school, like seeing everybody wearing the fresh Jordans, fresh Iverson, you know, um, fresh clothes and shit, wearing the same shit, like how did that affect you? Because that affects a lot of people. That's where the streets came in. You know what I'm saying? And my mama, she had, she actually had six kids of her own. And you know, I'm the youngest of all of them. And I had to kind of realize she can't really do it for me. So that's when I had to, and I wouldn't really call it the streets. It's just called survival me. You know, just growing, I'm a product of my environment. So I'm trying to make it out, trying to find a way without stressing her. Like I never went home back, back to my mama's house. Yeah. To this day, I can call my mama and put on a speaker. She gonna say, assalamu alaikum. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I love you, I even know she know. Like, it just helped me to know my mama know I'm doing good and not breaking her back at all. She just know she can call me and I'm doing good. That made me, you know what I mean? Right. So did you ever like, fuck it, I'm gonna go get a nine to five? Like, have you ever worked a nine yeah. to five? Nah, hell no. Nah. I tried. I'm gonna tell you, I did one nine to five, it was UPS. But the only time I worked, it was like working in the office. They give you your first week check for working in the office. Anybody who can relate, I'm pretty sure somebody don't work at UPS. They give you a week for working in the office. As soon as they put me out there to push in the box, mm -hmm. and they had somebody over me to my oh no, nah, gone. I can't. I can't. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. type of person I had, I just knew it wasn't for me. Yeah. Like the office part was cool learning because it was kind of like school. Y'all paying me to go to school for a second. As soon as I got there, really working and seeing what I was doing for the amount of money, I said, oh no, nah, this yeah. ain't me. So That's the only yeah. job I and that in. Uh, I worked at Phillips Arena. My partner put me on that, but they was kind of cheating that day. Let me tell you how that worked. They would kind of cheat me at my check. I worked there for like three weeks. I ain't gonna lie, I stole so much money from them. And, three, <laughs> and I got up out of there because like, I was slick. I always just slick. Like, so every, everybody who paid, they'll either leave a tip or give you exact change sometimes. Was, that, was this like at the concession stand? Yup, and I'm running the stand, I'm running the money. So every time they, I'm finding a way to act like I put it in the register, not counting the, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. counting it, just uh, putting it in the sock. I'm leaving home three, four hundred every day. How much do you think you probably ran up like throughout the, the whole span that you working in? Shit, I ran up a couple of thousand doing it, but I ain't gonna lie, I put my, uh, my little partners on it with me. That had started getting hot. That when I learned everybody can't kill. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was, I, they, they just hired two new folks. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there stealing, so they, they get right on them. Uh, the stock been coming up short. They ain't thinking about the money, but they know the, the, yeah. the popcorn and the money ain't, or whatever they yeah. ain't yeah. adding up. So exactly. they get right up out of them. Uh. Yeah. But I worked there for probably like two, three weeks, but I think. It was, was this like during like high school or like afterwards? Yeah, no, nah, it was it was it definitely in high school, early high school, like cause it was, it was some high school shit, like it was some high school shit. So say like uh, a nigga was like, yeah, I got something for you, ten dollars an hour shit. So I'm thinking, like, cool for it. Yeah. Phyllis Marini, you don't need no drug tech on nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, just one of them drug them, cause nigga ain't you know I wasn't really looking for too hard work, mm -hmm. but I went up there cause it was a cool nigga doing it. But my first check said like one ten. I knew that ain't add up. So, you know, I'm gonna get mine, yeah, you know. Yeah. Everything I do, I'm, I'm I, It's always, if you ask me any, about, like, any story in my life, it's always kind of chess. Like, somebody thinking they finna play me, but I'm most likely gonna come out on top. Cause, yeah. You know, much you think you use me, I might be trying to use you. Straight up. You know, so. so I ain't gonna let you know, but what I want you to know. Right. So, you, you quit Phillips Arena. Uh, and then you, okay, did you, did you graduate school on time or not? Uh, I, I also, uh, I actually uh, graduated high school early. Early. Tell you how I did that, they had the block courses, which which made two classes in one where you stayed long. Mm. Me being me, I asked my, because I wasn't actually doing good. I was smart, but I wasn't doing good as far as. Because school wasn't entertaining. Nah, yeah, not even that. I wasn't, it just was, I was, set, I, you know, I was seven, seven weed in school, just. Smoking, you know, I was kind of smart in here. I get the work done as far as conduct I want to write. So I asked the um, assistant principal, shout out to me, Ma. She always kept me. She looked out for me a couple times. She wasn't supposed to. Shout out to her, too. But nah, well, um, like they caught, nigga, even the, the officer, nigga, they came, me and my butt, RPG trail, they caught us in school with the weed. So you know how they feeling you and they got them feel the plastic. They can hear everybody hear the plastic in your sock. Mm. I'm just at my hand here. 
Oh man, so, this the officers. So I'm like, damn. You had a relationship with like with the yeah, staff? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want you to get in trouble too much. You get a bond with them. Fuck the teacher and declare that you've been bad. And then once you keep going to this same person's office, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I did a bond. But like I said, man, mom's, I still remember her to the day. She was cool. She kept, I could have been worse off. I could have been gone, sent to alternative school, anything. She kept, she saved me a lot of time. I appreciate that too. Yeah. But I graduated early because block schedule, I ended up cutting off all the gym, the art, the, all that, anything like that. Taking all, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Science, social studies. Math, mm -hmm. all that. So once I got enough, um, um, whatever you call it, credits, I was good. Yeah, I oh. actually walked and everything, got my diploma. Right, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you, um, you graduated school. Was you rapping when you started graduating, or was you getting money? Was you juggling? Like, what was you doing after you graduated? Yeah, I realized. I'm to be real. When it comes to rap, rap never came to me like that. Rap came to me because in the hood, even everybody around me know that. Like in the hood, I was the flash nigga. And I was cool, so niggas who was rapping wanted to get me on the track. But the first ever track I ever got them did, like I was, come on, I think I said, and then in Hunter in Japanese, I be overseas with fault lights on my full ring. You know what I'm saying? I be overseas with it. You know what I'm saying? So that was just like, it was my bar off the rip, but it was really how I was living because I started getting money, you know? I went back for real to the floor, yeah. Gucci. So I said, I think my first, when I came in, I said, I bought that new Audi. I dropped the top that kept the brain, seven piece belly. It looked like I'm from Switzerland. My jeweler is an a rap It was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, they my first ever words, so they just like, they were behind them when I first started. These just first. like your close homies? Yeah, like this the, this the hood. Yeah. This, when I first started rapping was a counter roll group. It wasn't no group, but that, that who was behind me, I, I, it was like a counter roll record. But I had to realize the world bigger than counter roll, so we ain't gonna make it trying to be counter roll records, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you start rapping, you start taking it serious. Now it seems like all of a sudden, maybe I live in I live in Texas, I've been in LA and Miami, but it seems like the last six months you've really been bubbling. What was like that one thing that really like solidified Man, your rap. spot in the city? Oh, as far as the status though, like right now, like what was that one thing that really like solidified your spot in the city? I would say um, I, what made me, I think, boom, I ain't gonna lie, the 12 came and kicked me though, beat me up, took everything my money. So wait, 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 rerun. Huh? What, what happened with that whole you? So nah, that ain't that, ain't, fuck that, we gonna skip it. Okay, get to the rap, okay. I'm trying to take uh. the rap store. So I'm, I'm in a law though, but they come kick my dough. They get me. I end up, the case is missed, I end up beating me. Okay. That's, that was the accusation. But they end up doing that, but I was already fucking with Pee Wee, so got down. I was like, man, I gotta take the rap shit a little bit more serious, cause I'm tired of the street. This shit ain't, ain't work. Like, every time it's still. Even when you get, it's always something, basically. So that right there, so when I made the African Diamonds and I started performing, I was really, I ain't nobody know, I was really doing it with a passion. Like, I'm trying to get up out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I rap with a passion, bro. Yeah. I'm really from the street, and I'm really, really trying to buy my mama house. You know what I mean? Yeah. So being around Pee Wee Longway, um, mm -hmm. is he the one who introduced you to, you know, Keem and your manager and, you know, everybody else? Man. Yeah, nah, bro. I've been around rap way before Pee Wee ever started. We was, I'm, I'm, my name is Hood Rich Pablo Juan. You know, we been around, I've been around Charlotte Thug. I know Thug personally. Migos personally before they ever had a Versace Versace song. Skip it or flip it. Like, when it comes to that, I, I'm already known. Like, I ain't had nothing to do. I, that's how I knew him. He was just another person, like. Yeah. But he, I, you know, that that's the route I took. But I knew everybody. If you if you look at my music, me goes always coming in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Cause my so, real, so, my real brother. We was in matching the line together before they ever. Yeah. So, so when you started rapping, it was kind of easy when you wanted to be serious because everybody around you was already in position. I wouldn't say easy. It was kind of easy once they seen yeah. how, what flavor I had yeah. and they already knew me. Okay. When they seen that wasn't no bullshit, they were like, "Shit, I ain't bullshit," and we know how he come. Yeah. And like, you know, you know, I really do this shit. Not, not trying to say it like that, but design drug for real. I used to serve Migo pints of act. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pulling up with Gucci on, fresh out of jail, whatever. Like, yeah. yeah. 
you can go check the stats. Like that, I, nigga, I was at the audio video shooting three, four pints of egg. You know what I mean? Four zips of cookie, you smoking porn up. Been like that, it just, you know, no, I'm not, right now, my, one of my partners who just trapping, try to rap, I'm not gonna be shitting you, you know what I mean? But at the same time, if my partner who trying to rap, showing me a little serious and I hear it, and I ain't gonna deny no, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Can't deny good music. Straight up. That's just like my young nigga, my young nigga from the streets, but when I hear that, I be like, oh nah, we gone. Yeah. Drug rate peso. And when I first made he would tell me, like, I know him from the street, but he would tell me how he wanted to do it. You know, we came up with the concept, Drew Rich and all that. His first song, he really went crazy. And I was where I come from. And you see what I did with it? Mm -hmm. Take it right to, oh, no, nah, we ain't gonna drop this. We gonna go straight video, go to where we come from the hood. Take it up through that. Like, anybody, anybody who real, you a real one. I just talked to Thug on the phone. You a real one, bro. You see somebody doing what they supposed to do. It ain't like they lazy or they. And they really working, you ain't gonna, it don't take that much to, uh, cause ain't nobody get where they going without no help, you know what I mean? Sure. Nobody get where they going. So what were some ways you were, not, not to get too deep in your pockets or your business, but what were some ways you was making money, um, hey man, you can get deep li living up a little bit? You know what I'm saying? You can get deep in these motherfuckers, I'm hood, rich, rich hood, nigga, all groove, you know what I'm saying? Straight cheese, shit like that. So what were some ways you were making money? Was you like, was it was it drugs? Was it finessing, scamming? Like, what were some ways you were you were making a few dollars? You know, uh, you I, know, before rap. All of the above. I ain't gonna lie. I, like, I, I, like, you, like you were saying, how how did I get around the music? How, basically, how did folks know me from serving? You know what I mean? That's not me these days. So I'm not just acting like I'm a drug dealer because I definitely don't sell drugs today. But yeah. you know. Them back in the days, that was my way of, of trying to make it in a better position. If I'm around rappers who need weed and lean and, and, and Molly or pills or, or whatever, then I would be a dummy not to try to get it and sit there and make some money rather than sit there and just be another body in the room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I always was a hustler, money giver. Straight up. I knew back when they had Block NT, I used to pull up on Supply and Colossal and YC serving them. Way back, future them all them. Like, I've been doing this shit, bro. Not the name dropping them, but that, that just with me. The one that's special, like you can buy, you can buy drugs from anybody, bro. But I've been around, like mm -hmm. I've been around, so I used to maneuver. And I, you know, I seen a lot of people's situation, how they fell, how they came up. I right there on stage with niggas. Some nigga went Hollywood, some nigga kept it up. That would that would make me who I am. See, you know, I learned from other people's situations too. Sometimes I ain't got to learn the hard way, you know what I mean? 